How should a single member LLC fill out a W-9? In this video, I'll simplify the difference between the LLC and how it's treated for tax purposes so that you always know when to use your social security number or your EIN number, as well as understanding the S Corp election. And to help you understand all of the differences between the LLC as a business entity and taxes. Amanda here from the Business Finance Coach where I'm simplifying the technicalities of business. If you wanna grow your business and you're new to my channel, consider subscribing by clicking the watermark in your bottom right corner of this video. I look forward to seeing you around the channel and learning more about your business and your questions. Okay, so here we are at the W-9 form. You can see the IRS link up here. To get to this form, just Google search IRS W-9. Okay, so this is a request for taxpayer identification number and certification. What this means is if someone has hired you to do a project for them, hired your business, they will give you this form to complete. This form takes the place of form W-4, which may sound familiar from when you were an employee and you got a job, you would complete your W-4. So if you hire someone to work for you and you're gonna pay them over $600 and they're not a large corporation like Home Depot or Walmart, then you also wanna give them this form as a way to request for their information for taxes, including their tax number. When you fill out this form, you have to take a look at your business. If you are an LLC, that LLC is a legal type of business. For taxes, you may be aware that your LLC is a disregarded entity. What that really means is that the IRS has not created a tax form for the LLC. The LLC was created more recently to help small business owners be able to have limited liability protection and essentially start businesses easier without all of the requirements that go with a corporation. So the LLC is a benefit to you because it's easier. It's formed at your state level and it's a legal business. For taxes, it doesn't exist, okay? So instead, how you are taxed is based on how many members are in your LLC. One member to your LLC, you default to be taxed as self-employed. Two or more members in your LLC, you default to be taxed as a partnership. The third option, both of these situations, one member or two or more, can choose to elect S-Corp status. S-Corp is a special way to be taxed for small businesses. And be sure to check out my series on being taxed as an S-Corp. If you default to be taxed as self-employed, your business for taxes is not separate from you. Legally, it is. Now, so when it comes to filling out a form like this, the W-9 form, so your name as a single member LLC as shown on your income tax return, name is required. This must be your personal name. As a single member LLC that defaults to be self-employed, you need to put your name here. However, just like it says on line two, business name, disregarded entity name if different. You put your LLC name here. When it comes to box three, you can only choose one of these. So as a single member LLC that defaults to be self-employed, you obviously choose this first option, individual sole proprietor or single member LLC. Once you do that, you do have to use the social security number down here in your taxpayer identification number and not an EIN. And I'll explain why. If you have an EIN, you can use that for if you have employees. You're required to use it if you have employees. If you read the instructions for this section, 
it says if you have a disregarded entity, go to the next level that is regarded for tax purposes and put that identification number. So for a single member LLC, defaults as self-employed reported on your personal return on a Schedule C attached to your personal return, the next number, the next recognized taxpayer is you as an individual and you'll put your social security number. Now, to make sure that the that your income ends up under your LLC for legal purposes, make sure to mention to the business paying you that you want to be paid under your business name. And they should do that for you because you've included that here. If you are a multi-member LLC, what would the name of the tax return, what would the name of, of the taxpayer be? The name of the taxpayer would be the partnership return that you file with the IRS, which will be the LLC name for a multi-member partnership. The disregarded entity name is probably the same as that LLC partnership name, so you would leave this blank. Then down here, you would just check partnership. And for the number, it would be the partnership EIN number because there is no other number for an actual business entity for federal other than the EIN. Now, if you form the S Corp, now what is the first return after your disregarded LLC that's being filed? It's no longer your personal return, it's your S Corp return. The first recognized IRS entity is the S Corp, which will have your LLC business name on it, even if it's a single member LLC. So in that case, you'll put the LLC name here on line one. That would be the same for line two, so you'd leave that blank. And coming down to box three, you will check this limited liability company and enter the tax classification here, which is S for S Corp. Then when you come down to the taxpayer identification number, you again are going to use the EIN because to file an S Corp return, you cannot use a social security number. You must use that separate entity number, EIN number on the 1120S S Corp return. Now you can scroll down here to see other um, directions. You can see this information that I just summarized here and down here for the disregarded entity as far as why a single member LLC has to put their social security number. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is when it comes to form 1099 miscellaneous, because this is the first form that you'll fill out when you're working for a business and that you'll give to people that you are paying more than $600 to do work for your business. And then at the end of the year, the people who you gave this form to will issue your business a 1099 and you will issue people you paid a 1099 miscellaneous. So you should be pulling that information from this form on the 1099s that you issue people. You should include whatever number you included on your W-9. So if you're a single member LLC, and you default to be taxed as self-employed, you need to put your social security number on the 1099s that you issue to people you paid. If you are a multi-member LLC or any amount of members, but you elect S Corp status, then you will use a federal EIN number. So if you got the EIN number and you're a single member LLC, self-employed for taxes, what did you get the number for? Well, you didn't actually need the number unless you pay employees. That's the only time you need that number. And you know, in, even in one of my videos in the past few years, I had made a mistake and I had said that you could use your EIN number, your federal EIN number to keep your social security number private as a single member LLC and it was a lawyer who told me that which is interesting because it's a tax rule but lawyers in a way sell this S Corp election as well as the EIN because it's part of forming a business 
when in reality, my experience that I've learned from drilling all sorts of small business lawyers for you um, is that they actually, you know, really have a very limited amount of knowledge about this. So I hope that I have passed some of that clarity on to you. I would love to hear your questions in the comments below. If you are growing your self-employed work into a business, if you want to master your finances, do subscribe and join me here at the Business Finance Coach or check out some of my other videos and I will see you next time.